we will start as usual with prayers. All of you sit straight. Keep your back erect. Have few breaths. Ascend your chest, sternum region. Keep your shoulders rolling back properly. Head straight, neck straight. Throat passive, tongue passive. Fold the palms in front of your chest. Close your eyes completely. Keep your facial muscles, facial skin passive. Do not tense yourself. Once again with the eyes closed, take your attention to your own spine. And from the base of the spine to the top, lift the spine anteriorly up. So the frontal body ascends from base to the top. Unfold the bottom navel region, bottom thoracic chest, and bottom of the throat. These three areas you have to take care in such a way that nowhere the compression occurs. And the spine has to support anteriorly to this front of the body. Keep the shoulders trapezium rolling back and maintain the inner spine further high up. Positioning the body, breathe in such a way that the breath supports the inner body. Draw the eyes in, draw the eardrums in and keep your tongue resting on the lower palate. Bring the freedom in the mouth cavity, inner walls of the throat by quietening them inward. As far as the chest is concerned, support it with the inhalation breath so that the inner walls of the chest remain high up. Positioning yourself in that way, make your mind to reach deeper inside as the juice remains hidden in the fruit. Your mind has to remain hidden inside in this outer layer of the body. But at the same time you find in the fruit, the juice reaching everywhere. And that's how the fruit tastes everywhere, same way, equally with its quality. In the similar manner, let your mind penetrate every other area, so that this body, the earthen body remains juicy from within. And feel that inner fragrance, inner wetness. Do not invite any kind of dryness. A slow, soft, smooth exhalation as of from the brain cells, from the senses of perception, you are allowing the mind to penetrate deeper in. And with that juicy mind inside, you are going to offer your prayers to Lord Patanjali. You are going to offer your prayers to Lord Vishnu as well and Ganapati. So all of you be quiet, silent. Passive from within, 
so that mentally you are ready to surrender to the Lord. Our first prayers will go to Lord Patanjali, Lord Ganesha as he has to remove or help us to remove all those obstacles which comes in the way. Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Purume Deva Shubhakaryeshu Sarvada Lord Vishnu Shantakaram Bhujagashayanam Padmanabham Suresham Vishwadharam Gaganasadusham Meghavarnam Shubhangam Lakshmikantam Kamala Nayanam Yogi Hrud Jhana Gamyam Vande Vishnum Bhava Bhayaharam Sarvalokai Kanatham Lord Hanuman Manojavam Maruta Tulya Vegam Jitendriyam Buddhi Matam Varishtham Vatatmajam Vanarayutha Mukhyam Sriramadutam Sharanam Prapadye Now our prayers will go to Lord Patanjali And I hope that now all of you will be able to participate. Om. Chittasya padena vacham Yogena chittasya padena vacham Malam sharirasya chavaidya kena Malam sharirasya chavaidya kena Yopa karottam pravaram muninam Patanjalim Pranjali Rana Tosmi Abahu Purushakaram Shankha Chakra Siddharinam Sahasra Shirasam Shvetam Pranamami Patanjalim Harihi Om Bow down to Lord Patanjali. Please release your hands down. 
and slowly raise your head upward and open the eyes. <coughs> Friends, first of all I have to thank you all for coming here to celebrate my birthday. Thank you very much. As for whole of my life, my celebration remained just practicing yoga. So I decided to celebrate 68th birthday also in the similar manner. You won't believe because I was, I started teaching almost from the age of 13 in my school. Though at that time I was not called as a teacher because I was friends to all those students who were attending the school. But my teacher invited me to train the pupils for the yoga competition. And that's how it became a foundation. And I started teaching. So in that sense, you need not expect from me yoga of that high standard. I just simply practice. But when the time allows, I practice. If the life demands something else as a responsibility, I give myself for that. And that's why my practice remains almost always up and down. And now at this stage you are seeing me that I cannot even lift my hand. Thank God that after so many months at least I could do Namaste to you. Otherwise my hand was remaining there only. I hope that the hand improves sometimes and I will be able to raise my hand up higher. Because I can't do even Urdhva Sasana now. But still the sadhana has to continue. If some injury takes place, you cannot help. But still one can build up in this manner. The very sadhana, knowing very limitations of ours. So in that limitation, I have tried whole of my life to come to certain level. We have called this convention, birthday convention, yoga sadhana. Sadhana is not merely just the practice. Though in English we have to translate, we say sadhana. Means practice. But the sadhana contains something else than that. The very sadhana tells that how we need to have a complete gravitation towards our inner improvement, inner evolution. And that's why that practice could be just on the surface level, but that inner inclination which is very important has to every time lead, lead us to go deeper somewhere inside, to reach the very soul. Roughly, many a time it is divided into three steps. As Bahiranga Sadhana, Antaranga Sadhana, and then Antaratma Sadhana. It is something like we have to know, if I haven't not, if my parents had not given me name as Gita, it would have been very difficult for you to recognize me, call me, etc. But since name is there, it is easier for you to remember me, to call me, or talk to me, to write a letter to me. So you say it is for Gita Ayengar. 
in the similar manner for sadhana also they have to name it as an bahiranga sadhana antaranga sadhana and antaratma sadhana but always remember no sadhana is possible unless you are totally involved in it you need your body you need your mind you need your soul to do the sadhana we have to practice sometimes your mind says oh live give up today no practice i am not feeling well you say inside sometimes there is a duality should i do or should i not do and when you come to the practice or when you start doing then also you find out how to protect myself so i don't exert myself i don't perspire too much at certain stage you say let me perspire more let me do work and then when body breaks then you say oh i think it's not suitable for me there's all kind of things the body mind which all keeps on playing but with all this opposition still you do something as a practice right be which you may call light practice heavy practice strong practice weak practice whatever you may call but all these three elements are required there your presence is very much required over there and that's how the sadhana begins so when we say bahiranga sadhana the very span of bahiranga sadhana is quite big it's like when you have to have an association you have to collect people members for it otherwise you can't call it as a association so you invite people you want them to become members in the similar manner we need to call our inner content to be the participant or the member of that association obviously the body is the first instrument which is required there so you invite it you need your skin you need your muscles you need strength in them you need your eyes ears nose everything so this body the outer body the muscle bones etc the inner organic body you need to invite it you need to say yes come and help me as i am going to do sadhana and that's why this bahiranga sadhana need a lot of time you need to culture each and every cell of yours to participate in that sadhana the antaranga sadhana begins only then when this outer body is prepared to help you the antaranga sadhana is not possible unless this bahiranga is available to you so you have to make yourself avail of the all these what you have and then you take yourself somewhere deeper inside along with this instrument to go in to reach the soul so though for verbal expression we may divide it into bahiranga sadhana antaranga sadhana and antaratma sadhana but all these three go together only the difference is that bahiranga will be more antaranga less antaratma perhaps very much less as you begin to penetrate into the subject then you find that bahiranga has been conquered by you antaranga has been conquered by you and that's why antaratma sadhana becomes bigger antaranga little less than that and bahiranga further less than that in other words at that time you are not stopping your any practice as such but you are so quick to catch that bahiranga to give you an example if you have you have just now as you have come here and if i say suddenly all of you will be doing urdhva dhanurasana you will say oh why because you know that at least you should do some tadasana 
at least you should do some standing poses or you should at least make your spine to move, arm to move, legs to move, to do Urdhvanarasana. So you have certain sequence. If you are today you have to do Urdhvanarasana, you say let me go through all this. You might be having your own ideas, like few standing poses or few back, uh, 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 inversions like Shishasana, Fulam, Balas, whatever. In other words, you call it as warming up yourself. You say let us warm up for Urdhvanarasana, you say. But you have seen Guruji, many a time he has showed that, according to the demand there, if he has to show, he shows. You him, see him suddenly doing certain asanas, without warming up. I am just giving an example. Now you may question how this happens. This happens because already the Bahiranga sadhana has been turned to a great extent. The Antaranga Sadhana has to been done to a great extent. And now what expresses is from Antaratma Sadhana? In your case, it might be true that when you stand for your Tadasana or Tikunasana, you don't need much preparation because to some extent you are ready to do that. Because Bahiranga has been already done by you for Tadasana and Trikonasana. Antaranga has been done to some extent in Tadasana and Trikonasana. But Antaratma takes longer time because post still you said this doesn't reach inside. That's why you take little time to see in Tadasana, am I standing on right leg, am I standing on left leg, how my right foot is, how my left foot is, how my toes are, how my knees are. That is how the Bahiranga begins. That means all these are, the sadhanas are enfolded in that Bhairanga sadhana and that's why we need to do a lot of Bhairanga to reach the Antaratma. Any beginner, as I often, often say, that when we start doing, we are a beginner at that time. If today we start, today we are a beginner. We might have done for years together earlier, but today we became, become beginner. We need to watch again, even for last 30 years you might have watched your Tarasana. But again when you start today, you need to watch with the fresh eyes, with the new eyes, your Tarasana. And that's why being the pupils of yoga, we should not demarcate as Bahiranga, Antaranga and Antaratma. Our penetration has to begin from outside. An unripe fruit on the tree, when you touch, the skin is very hard because that skin, the outer skin of that fruit is protecting the inner fruit which you are going to eat when it is ripe. Right now that fruit might not be ready or prepared, it's not edible at that time, you cannot eat it because still it is unripe, it's sore still. But the skin outside is so thick that it keeps on protecting the inner fruit. And that is what we need the Bahiranga Sadhana. Many a time you say that, oh, today I haven't got the time, what should I do? You need a Bahiranga Sadhana. So you protect that inner fruit. You protect your inner urge. You protect your inner interest. You, have, you protect your inner gravitation towards the soul. But if you give up, then immediately you feel that. And that is how you, it pricks when you don't practice, it pricks you somewhere saying, oh, I could not practice today. I could not do well. And in that sense, this Bahiranga Sadhana is very, very, very important for us. I hope you understand. The approach has to be like that where you reach from, you start from Bahiranga to reach the Antaratma. The inner absorption doesn't come at once. You eat the food, you chew the food, you take it in into your stomach, it takes its own time to digest. After digestion, it takes its own time for absorption. 
and from absorption it takes further time to assimilation it has to assimilate in the body otherwise you always many a time you feel that you eat the food but it doesn't reach inside that's why you remain undernourished you remain weak you say i am having milk but still i am weak i take proteins but still still i feel weak why you feel weak because it has not been assimilated that means your inner system has to be very clear very healthy to assimilate that so you have to see that your practice also goes in that with those stages first you have to chew you have to take little trouble so your teeth should be ready to chew the food and then the digestion has to take place then the absorption has to take place and then the assimilation has to take place so please understand that the bahiranga sadhana antaranga sadhana and antaratma sadhana has to go in with that grade so that the yoga penetrates deeper into yourself yoga gets circulated in your body till that there is a difference always you feel that you are practicing but body doesn't take it mind doesn't take it so we cannot expect this to happen in one life don't keep that time limitation we at least have to understand practitioners of yoga that might be there as we say sometimes the education goes in certain grades the time limit will be there we have different courses for it and we go through those courses but for practice of yoga there is no limit inside that manner you cannot you cannot fix it into the course all the courses are also bahiranga with that bahiranga practice we have to see that with this limit we will learn these things learning this thing we will step ahead step up and in this manner is not the question of one life that we have to make all that progress we have to have those hopes that we may take several lives to reach that state but as the fruit unripe fruit protects the inner juice inside we have to protect that inner juice with this strong covering if that cover itself breaks it will leak out everything and the fruit will not be ready for you any day so we have to have in our, in our mind that bahiranga sadhana has to be done by one and all every day to reach somewhere deeper inside i hope you understand that so with this we will start with the standing poses i have to just request you one thing since the space will be small but still we have tried to accommodate as many as possible so all of you show that understanding don't fight with your neighbors try to give the space and try to adjust i hope you understand this let us start our bahiranga sadhana from this that all are eager to learn all are eager to do so let let us give a chance to everyone so that don't say that you won't move yourself forward backward sideways as per requirement and see that you try to accommodate all in this all thank you very much we'll stand now for our standing poses as usual <laughs> 